Networking and marketing made simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Super excited to announce that this podcast episode is actually sponsored by Spotify for podcasters. And I've talked about this before and you're listening to this podcast for a reason. Maybe you want to make a podcast and Spotify has its own platform that lets you create and make your own podcast super, super easy, but then have the ability to distribute it everywhere and you can even monetize it and earn money. And it's all in one place for absolutely free. And again, it's called Spotify for Podcasters. And just to give you kind of the ins and outs of of how it works, it lets you record, edit from your phone or computer. And it's there's no real uh, confusing aspect to how it's done. So you can set it up very easily and literally start creating your podcast today. Then you can distribute it um, on Spotify and everywhere else, Google podcast, Apple podcast, everywhere, uh, iHeartRadio. video podcasts are also available on Spotify. So again, and if you want to take, um, conversations with your fans to the next level, you can do Q and a, you can do polls, you can really build a lot of engagement. And with Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads like this podcast subscriptions and so much more. And best of all, again, it's totally free with no catch. And ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, uh, again, it's helped me, my business grow. I've monetized it. I'm approaching 500,000 listens, and I highly recommend you give this a try. So make sure that you download the Spotify for podcasters app, or all you have to do is go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another dual episode for those. Hello, hello. uh, Okay, there you go. Nancy's with me. (laughs) I I, I guess she she beat me to the introduction. So uh, (laughs) the hello, hello you heard was from Nancy. Well, just want to welcome all her listeners and all of my listeners back to another dual episode. Nancy and I love doing these. And what we wanted to talk about today is something that neither of us um, on my podcast, you know, the nearly you know, 500 episodes and Nancy's, you know, closing in on 200 episodes Uh, out of those 700 episodes, we've never talked about this topic and we've talked about a lot of stuff. So what we're going to be talking about today are three ways of how to create an up leveled experience within a course that you have within a program that you offer. It could be coaching. It could be a group program. It could be a self-guided course. It could be a mastermind. So we wanted to make this very, very simple for all of you, giving you three specific things that you can do to create that up-leveled experience. So the first thing is mapping out the journey. Now, I want to give a, a quick tidbit here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Nancy. Why this is so important is when someone is is joining a course of yours or a membership that you have or a year-long program or mastermind like the one that Nancy and I have, people want to see the journey that they're going to go on. It, and it's, it's not about uh, keeping things a secret, but you also want to give people a visual path that they can look at of the journey they're about to go down. And... This could be uh, acknowledging benchmarks that they're going to have, things that they're going to succeed, milestones, obviously, as they're called, uh, all along the way. So you want to make sure that whether it is a DIY course, whether it is a program that you're offering, whether it is a group mastermind that you have, mapping out that journey for the people is so important because they need to know what it is that they're about to jump into. Nance? Yeah, I just, uh, and this is full transparency. I mean, this has been such a a journey for myself, you know, this past year plus. 
uh, really just trying to map out and create the best experiences possible for not only our people, you know, but also giving advice to any of our, you know, clients or people who are in our uh, mastermind who are working on creating their own programs. And one thing that I really feel is that I've been able to find a lot of information and training out there on what programs to create and, you know, different ideas and different things like that. However, what I have not found is a lot of like resources and a lot of great advice around how to actually design and build out the program. And so I kind of went down this journey a little bit deeper um, last year, whenever I started building out our um, program, which is called Expert Foundations, which we actually officially, officially opened the doors this Thursday. Um, which I'm so incredibly proud of. But this course was about, I would say, almost nine years in the making. Uh, and so whenever I say nine years in the making, it's I'm taking a lot of information, you know, not just that I've learned over the years. Um, it's information that Scott's learned over the years. It's stuff that we have really, really worked on and we've done ourselves um, that we've put into a program. Now, the challenge for me was how do we create a program, one, that's affordable, which means it's not going to be able to have us, you know, be involved in every little step along the way, right? You know, our time is incredibly, um, you know, limited as it is. So we wanted to create a program where people can, you know, sign up for something, take advantage of it, again, be able to enjoy the program. Uh, but we knew that we weren't going to be able to really be directly as hands-on as much as possible. So I set out to really map out uh, the journey that I wanted people to take. I wanted to really like go through this thing and see what that whole process was. So anyway, back to Scott's point is step number one, right? We want to, if we're going to really focus on creating an amazing experience for our peeps, one, you got to map it out. So I don't just mean map it out like, oh, okay, you know, somebody signed up for the program and then we're going to send them a welcome email. No, right? You know, we've got to talk about what this program actually looks like. So sitting down and actually mapping out the different steps uh, that your client's going to go through from signing up to signing in for the first time, you know, what that, what is that experience going to be like as they progress through the course? You know, what kind of community are you going to have around this? Uh, are you going to be doing any kind of trainings or Zoom calls or, you know, different support in that way? So really first things first is mapping out the journey. Now, the other thing that I'll add in there as well is you want to make sure that you choose, uh, you know, a platform that makes sense to build out your course on. So I know a lot of people out there, you know, if you have like an all-in-one, like a Kajabi, that's great. In fact, I think even Brendan Burchard uh, really promotes Kajabi as well. I know Amy Porterfield used to as well. Uh, you know, Kajabi is a great one. We use it for a lot of different things. Um, but for this program that we built, I really wanted to gamify the heck out of it. <laughs> so do you remember, Scott, I was like so jazzed, you know, trying to find a platform that would do all the things, right? You know, make it so that we could make an experience so that number one, as people were completing different assignments, different pieces of the course, um, different things would happen, right? They would get experience points. Uh, they would unlock different things. They would get templates and Trello boards and all kinds of fun stuff. And so that was really something that was big and important to me. It also feels really good to complete things. So Simon Sinek, Nancy and I talk about this all the time. You know, Simon Sinek talks about the power of releasing oxytocin, which is our feel good brain chemical. So he makes checklists for everything. So like if he goes and he has a bunch of errands, he loves checking things off because you're seeing all the things that you accomplish and, and why we chose to gamify this as, as Nancy said, as you kind of go through and you check things off and, you know, it makes all these fun noises and, and buzzing and bells and it feels good because it, it's progress, like checking off a box and knowing that you are moving forward in a part of the journey that's been mapped out for you. There's nothing that feels better because progress leads to more action. It's only when we don't take any action, we don't have any progress. There's no better feeling for a business owner and an entrepreneur to know that the journey that's been mapped out for them, they are walking down the path to complete that journey at the end of it. So 
it is so, so important to include that in that up-leveled experience. So number two, and this is a big one, and Nancy will, will share with you first her fear around, like she had a big time fear around this. And number two is asking for feedback. Now, right. <laughs> it's funny. We have a, not many, like people probably have seen this. We have a, <laughs> a, a puppy. We have three dogs and our littlest is a, a little schnauzer. Her name is uh, Ruby Marie and she's uh, a sass pot. So anyway, you might hear a little bit of barking in the background, but that's, that's, that's real time. So Nancy, number two, asking for feedback first, before you talk about the importance of asking for feedback, which again is the point of this. Uh, why were you so scared of including this in part of our journey? Because we didn't always ask for feedback in the beginning. You, don't, you know, it was a couple of years ago that we started to really instill this. So what what was it about um, asking for feedback uh, that scared you most? Yeah. So and, and you guys, I know, obviously we're not on video right now, but I have a dog in my lap, another dog trying to get in my lap. So I'm going to try to juggle through this. All right. So anyway, asking for feedback was very scary because it was the first time that we were really doing this program. I was a little bit nervous. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I was just a little, a little vulnerable and, uh, you know, asking for feedback was amazing. I actually created a little Google form, uh, and I started asking for feedback every quarter. And here's the thing that you got to realize that when you have a program and you really are putting yourself out there and you're training and you're trying to, you know, give value. The number one thing is, is you got to realize that feedback is so incredibly amazing. Uh, and it's so incredibly important because number one, you know, if your people are happy, they're going to tell you, you know, they're happy and here's what they like, right? Here's the things that you can continue doing. If your people are a little like, you know, upset or they wish something could be a little different, wouldn't you want to know? Um, I What I'll tell you is, Every single time I've asked for feedback, we have walked away with invaluable, I mean, seriously, so many amazing insights and things that people have thought that we would have never, you know, even thought about. And in fact, some of the things that we've added even to our mastermind, such as our book club call, we even do a Monday mindset call uh, to kick off the week and a few other things. Those were all recommendations from our members. You know, this expert foundations, which we built out, you know, like I said, from scratch, and this thing was like nine years in the making because it is jam packed with amazingness. I literally built the entire journey so that it was from start to finish. You will have all the basic foundations of your business built out finally, right? So anyway, the whole point is, is all along that journey, when we first launched it last year to our beta members, right, our founding members, I asked for feedback nonstop. It was like, what do you guys like? What would you like to see different? What can I add? You know, what standard operating procedures can I build out for you guys? Like, what can we do? It was pretty much a ask and you will get whatever you, you know, it's like the genie in the bottle. It's like, literally ask me what you want and I will put it in that program. And so again, it just makes for a better experience for your members, um, but also for future members and to ensure that you're delivering value, you know, with your, your course or program. Right. The big thing for me was without feedback, there is no, th th there is no progression of what you are offering. If, if you have a course, if you have a program, if you have a mastermind and you're not asking your members for feedback, how are you going to make it better? And there's a lot of people that have that, that scarcity mindset, like, God forbid, I ask for feedback. It's going to be something that I don't want to hear. And it's just going to make me upset. Now, not all feedback you get is positive feedback. There's people, you're not going to please everybody, but there are so many amazing things, as Nancy has said, that have come out of asking for feedback. As Nancy said, like mindset call, our book club, um, even uh, the pre-submission forms for our, our Q&A calls has been so invaluable because for those that don't know, you know, Nancy and I, we have a year long program where we meet with our group. Uh, the groups every single week and every other week is a master training and the weeks in between are Q and a sessions. And there were times where we would get on there and we're like, all right, guys, what are your questions? 
and people would just sit there. So someone suggested, you know, why don't you have a, a document where we can pre-submit the questions that we have? And it's been so great because now Nancy and I can actually prepare ahead of time for the questions that people have. And again, I'll go back to something I stated a couple minutes ago. You know, without feedback, you can't make your programs better. And this is going to ensure the evolution of what you're offering because what you have right now may be completely different a year from now. And, and I think the people that end up doing the best with their offerings are the ones that bob and weave, the ones that evolve over time. You know, there are a lot of courses and stuff out there, Nance, that we know about it that are completely outdated, right? It's it's like nothing new. It's the same old thing from 2012 that they, you know, you're assuming is working now 11 years later and it's not. So asking for that feedback allows you not only to hear from the members of your community, but this is the other big thing. It helps you decide who is the best fit for this community because the people that give you the best feedback are the ones that are the best fit, but people that aren't having maybe that best experience, there could be a reason why, and it's no fault to them. They may not have been the best fit or most suited for what you're offering. So it helps you get clarity around that. So it's so, so important to ask for that feedback. Now, the third and final thing, and this is big, outside of obviously mapping out the journey and asking for feedback, this one I would say is the most important because without this certain experience within your course or program, uh, people aren't going to have any success whatsoever. And so the third thing is keeping it simple. No one loves difficult. If, if you have something that is so hard for people to understand, it is way over their head, it's too much work, guess what? They're not going to do it. And if they don't do it, they're not going to get the results, which means your name is not going to come out of other people's mouths. So Nance, why is keeping it simple so, so important? Yeah, I think what most people end up doing when they create their first course or when they create a program, they feel like they need to. And I mean, a lot of times it's coming from a good place. They want to pack value into it. They want to just, you know, give their people so much. But really what that leads to, to your point, is confusion, overwhelm, frustration, whereas something a lot more simple, you know, even short videos, you know, nugget sized, uh, structuring things a little more basic. Uh, really can be the best way to go. And so I actually, whenever I was putting the final touches on expert foundations and really getting that all mapped out, I hired an instructional design expert uh, and actually had them look through how I had structured everything out. And I wasn't asking questions on, hey, is this good stuff to teach about? Because I knew. And in fact, they looked at it and they were like, holy cow. They were like, this is what B-School should have been. You know, like basically it is like the tangible, like, you know, plug and play templates, like everything. Uh, and she basically said, yeah, I mean, it's laid out beautifully. And she said, very simple. It's a journey. Everything unfolds. Uh, and really gave me this stamp of approval, which I already kind of felt really good about, but it gave me that extra set of eyes on the outside to make sure that I, which I sometimes do, uh, did not complicate it, right? I didn't make it more difficult than it needed to be. And so, you know, I even had someone go back through and say, all right, you know, am, am I building this out in the right way? So when in doubt and you're looking at things and you're in there and you're tinkering around and putting together this program, Try to step outside. You know, in fact, I we always use the old quote, right? You know, you can't see the label from inside the jar sometimes. If you feel like you're too in it, have a colleague, have a friend, maybe have a beta founding member, you know, test it uh, and actually let you know, right? The feedback, is it simple? Is it easy to understand? Is this something you can see yourself sticking with? Because I know, right? I've purchased so many different programs. I've been part of so many different things. And just because it wasn't convenient or I forgot where to go or something was a little confusing, I kind of dropped off. So you want to keep things simple uh, and you want to make sure that you're able to, you know, deliver the value and, and get that feedback from your peeps. Yeah. I mean, simple is is the best way to get people results. And I remember... Um, 
it was it was right around when Nancy and I first started dating um, years ago. I I bought this course, and it was like a nine and a half hour digital course. And I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not going through this. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here for nine hours. I mean, again, we've obviously we we joined a mastermind a couple of years ago, and some of the videos were really long, man. So we had to sit there for seventy five oh, minutes. Awful, yeah. awful. <laughs> and and again, you know, that's also part of the reason why our expert authority uh, mastermind, even the 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 recorded master classes that we have, they're no longer than twenty minutes, maybe. Um, our expert expert foundations course, our program. Some of the videos are like two minutes. We we wanted to make it not only simple to understand, but simple to apply. Because the more simple it is to that you make something applicable to what it is that person is wanting to learn, the better of an end result they're going to get. And I think the other big thing that Nancy touched on is deliver the value. I mean, that's what people are paying for. Don't over deliver in the sense that you're overwhelming people with what you're offering. I, I think, you know, in the very beginning when we were creating my my LinkedIn virtual course, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was very succinct, very clear, very actionable, but very simple for people to understand. And that's a lot of the feedback that we got. Like, man, this is great. It's under two hours. It's really easy to apply. You're very clear. That's what people want. That's what's going to give people a great experience where they're going to actually complete the assignments that you're offering. But again, most importantly, they're going to tell other people about it. You know, you can pump as much money as you want into Facebook ads or whatever else that you're doing, but word of mouth marketing, you know, other people telling other people about the experience that they have in your program, in your course, in your membership, it goes so, so far. So again, the three things that you want to do, uh, mapping out the journey, asking for feedback and keeping it simple. Now, um, the big thing that we also wanted to talk about, obviously, as you're listening to this, Nancy and I were doing a workshop um, all this week. It's getting your business organized in five days. Uh, but the exciting announcement is we are actually opening the doors to a program that we beta launched last year. Um, it got tremendous, tremendous results and feedback from people. It's called the Expert Foundations Program. If you're listening to this, and maybe you are going to be a part of our workshop this week, and you are struggling with putting the foundations of your business into place, meaning you have either in the beginning stages of your business or you have a business, but you're throwing spaghetti at the wall. You are all over the place and you want structure, you want simplicity, and you want the things that you need to do to move the, of the needle of your business forward, but in a very simplistic and succinct way. That's exactly what this program is. Um, it's A to Z. I, I can't really uh, talk like any much more about it and how amazing it is. Nancy, this is her baby. She built this out from scratch. I got to give her all the kudos in the world. It's incredible. People love it. And I know you will too. So if you're listening to this and you are struggling with getting the foundations of your business in place and you want to skyrocket everything that you're doing, um, go to the description of this episode. You will see a link that will take you to um, the description of our Expert Foundations program, which the doors open later this week, and you are invited to dive in. Um, it's going to be a wonderful experience for you. It's Again, there's a lot in there. It's, it's actually a six-month program that we're giving people a year access to complete. So like a lot of other programs, you know, if it's a six month program, you're cut off after that. No, we were actually giving people an extra six months to actually complete it in the year if that's how much time they need or go back and go over things again that they feel they need to go back on. So again, all you have to do is go to the description of this epi episode to find out more about Expert Author uh, about expert Foundations. Um, and again, you can also reach out to us um, and head, head to our, our, our regular website. Um, or support at the time to grow.com is our, uh, an email where you can connect with myself and Nancy with any questions that you have. So everyone, we hope you found today's episode helpful, love and gratitude, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you so much again for checking out today's 
episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved, or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net, where you can schedule a free discovery call with me, where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.